Hello, my name is Joe Hedrick and I'm one of the infrastructure technical team managers here at Imagine It. In this video, we're going to discuss automated property set data in Civil 3D as a way to extend the benefit of working in a model-based environment. This is part one of a three-part video and blog series that will demonstrate how to define property set definitions containing formulas and calculations, then use the calculated values and labels and tables. This initial video will focus on defining the property set definitions and applying them to entities inside of Civil 3D. Let's get started. About nine months ago, Imagine it began creating gravity and pressure part libraries for different regions in the United States. One of the first libraries we created was Iowa Statewide Urban Design and Specifications, or SUDAS for short. One of the unique aspects of designing in Iowa is that while manholes are labeled on plan sheets with rim elevations, inlets are a little different. They have a concept of form grade, which is six inches lower than the insertion elevation. The form grade is what gets annotated on plans for inlets. The challenge was, how can we label this elevation in a consistent and automated workflow when the insertion point is middle of the structure along the back of the curb? We bout some ideas around internally and settled on utilizing Civil 3D property sets since we didn't want to have separate label styles and expressions just for inlets. Let's take a look at how this is done inside of the software. Here we are inside of Civil 3D, and you'll see that we're starting with a fairly simple pipe run. Uh, there is a mix of manholes and inlets. We'll see according to our CAD standard, manholes are prefixed with MH dash and then a number. Inlets are prefixed with IN dash and then a number. That'll become a little more important uh, as we go along. The very first thing to do when working with property sets is to create the definition itself. And we do that from the Manage tab, uh, Define uh, Property Sets. It's inside of this dialog box, expand out the tree. If you need to, we can simply right click, maybe say SUDAS uh, Form Grade, and the next thing uh, that we need to do is tell it, what, what do we want to apply this to, right? And if I, if I click Applies To, right, you'll see that we have a whole lot of options. There is just about everything um, that you could think of inside of Civil 3D, you know, really, and, and AutoCAD that can take a property set definition. So in our case, though, we are going to limit it to structures. And you know, we're working with gravity structures, so I'm simply going to click uh, you know, the little checkbox beside structure, um, hit apply, and now we're ready to move on to the definition tab. Now, the good thing is what I'm about to show, only this only really needs to be done once. All right, property set definitions can be stored inside of templates. Um, you can also drag and drop them you know, from one drawing to another. Uh, so this is something that we're really only gonna have to do once and just have the benefit and use it from that point forward. In previous Imagine It videos, uh, we have demonstrated uh, creating manual definitions. Right? And these are manual definitions. They're just really collections or, or containers uh, where the user can type in some particular property about something and then, you know, one of the benefits is how the software you know, use that and, and labels. So, you know, this would be something like maybe the manufacturer of a manhole, its installation date, when it was last cleaned or maintained. Uh, but in this video, I want to do something a little bit different. You know, I want to make sure or I want to take a look at some of these automatic property definitions as well as um, formulas because I want to make this absolutely as automated as we can. So I'm going to click the automatic property source. And the first thing we're going to do is add a handle. The handle is really nothing but a unique ID that AutoCAD uses to track entities, right? They're typically alphanumeric. 
yeah, so, you know, I'm not really sure having, you know, the unique ID, at least in this circumstance, is going to be too terribly beneficial for the user, right? We're going to need it uh, just because the formula is going to be built off of it. You know, however, having it displayed and visible to the user um, probably won't provide a whole lot of benefit. So I'm going to uncheck the visible box um, so that it ultimately, when we go to use this thing, it won't be displayed. The next thing we're going to do is add a formula definition, and there is an awful lot going on in this dialog box. Right? There's you know, areas in the top left, bottom left, you know, three boxes on the right. It's a, it's a very busy dialog. You know, however, one of the first things we're going to do is we need to give this component of our property set definition a name. So I'm going to call this form grade. And one of the things that it's going to be based on is the handle. So we're going to go ahead and give that a double click there. And we'll see here is an example of what a handle looks like. Uh, so just alphanumeric letters, numbers, you know, again, not sure that it's going to be, uh, you know, that beneficial uh, to the user. So the only real part of programming that we have to do here is the formula aspect. And the thing about the formula is, you know, this is basically VBScript. And VBScript uses uh, what we call the COM API, or you can kind of think of it as that older Visual Basic for Applications uh, based API. Uh, the, the script is very sensitive to what version of Civil 3D um, we're working in. In my case, we're working in 2021. So this script will work just fine in 2021. Uh, if you want to use it in previous versions, then a couple of tweaks will be made, need to be made. And it's, it's this line right here. Uh, this number right at the end at 13.3 will need to correspond to you know, the object model number uh, that the version of Civil 3D happens to be using. So, you know, really beyond that, the uh, the first part of this code uh, is just kind of setting up the function, um, grabbing you know the particular object in our case the structure. Uh, we are looking at uh, kind of or dimensioning some variables uh, for the name, the structure type, and then this form grade value. Uh, moving down, you know what we're doing here is we're we're taking a look, and I'm going to set the structure name equal to the name of the object, right? So in my case, think back, I had MH-1, IN-1, that's the name of the object. Uh, this next line checks to see if IN exists in that name. If it doesn't, it returns back zero. So really, you know, if we follow the, our standards, MHs are manholes, INs are inlets. Any MH, because it doesn't contain, you know, the, the string IN is going to return back zero. And if it equals zero, then my form grade elevation is really going to equal the rim elevation, right? Because we said all along that, you know, for manholes, we annotate the rim elevation. It's only for these inlets that we annotate the form grade, which ultimately is a half a foot below the rim. And you know this, these particular two lines of code is just a very simple if then, you know, meaning that hey, if it's a manhole, just use the rim. However, if it's not a manhole, meaning it's an inlet, uh, our form grade is going to equal the rim minus a half a foot. That's really all there is to it. This very last line, all it's doing is returning back the uh, the value, the form grade value rounded off to two decimal places. So that being that, that's all we have to do. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to hit Apply. We're going to hit OK. And we are ready to use this in, uh, in our model. The way that we do that, the easiest way that I found, is using AutoCAD properties. Right? The age-old, we're very used to properties, especially the design tab. We're going to go in and start taking a look at this extended data tab. And 
the next thing we need to do is select the structures that we that we want to apply this property set to. So select some more works really well. In this case, I'm going to select one and then do a select similar and that will highlight all of them. You know, down in the bottom left hand corner, we can say add property sets. Dialog box pops up and asks me which property sets do I want to add. In our case, we only have one. It's checked, so I'm going to say OK. And now you'll see that SUDAS FG and then form grade is saying varies. Well, that makes sense because all of these values are, are different. But if we start to take a look here, we'll see that, you know, for the manholes and the rim of that manhole is 351.71. So, you know, in our particular instance here, the manholes don't get adjusted. So that's why the form grade elevation is 351.71. However, if we take a look at an inlet, its rim elevation is 352.52. So its form grade is a half a foot lower than that, so it should be 352.02. And if I click on that, we'll see that it is. All right now, over on the end, I I did this one on purpose, and you'll notice that it's labeled as an inlet. It's rim being 352.46, um, so its form grade is going to be a half a foot uh, lower than that. But in our case, this is actually a manhole. I've just mislabeled it. So just to show that these things are absolutely dynamic, uh, what I'm going to do is expand out that pipe network and look at its structures. And basically, IN3 really needs to become MH4. And we'll see that update uh, was made here, 352.46. And if we click on this, you will see that its form grade is now updated to 352.46. Again, because it's a manhole, it's, we really just annotate the insertion point or the rim elevation based on that. Thank you for watching. To quickly recap, in this video, we created a new property set definition from scratch, used a formula to define some simple logic and perform calculations, and assign that definition to structure objects in a drawing. Stay tuned to the next couple of videos where this data will be incorporated into labels and tables.